Pashi. Hey, Sufi. Well, <laughs> it's a very special episode. <laughs> Why is that, Suf? All right. First of all, this is sponsored by Airbnb. We are currently in one of their units. Yeah, we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is an annual family trip we take with our parents. We come to Pittsburgh once a year. We go to a Steelers football game. Mm-hmm. Yet this is the first time uh, we're doing it like this. We're all staying under one roof like we did when we were children, <laughs> we have uh, a five bedroom house yep. in Shady Side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mom and dad can sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they want to. <laughs> we've just revealed by that cackle of a laugh, we've just revealed who our special guests are. <laughs> it's a wonderful unit. It is in the most lovely Pittsburgh way. These are some of the black and white photographs on the wall Roberto Clemente, Terry Bradshaw, Andy Warhol, Mr. Rogers. Arnold Palmer. They're really, I mean, that's kind of the, yeah. it was one too many, but that is the. Um, and Wiz Khalifa. And, and Wiz Khal- Khalifa. Yeah. Black and yellow. Black corner. and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't believe the first thing dad said on this. <laughs> it's Wiz Khalifa. I did not have that in the pool. <laughs> of what was the first Pittsburgh person dad was going to mention. And, uh, but it's very nice. We've already had um, Primani Brothers sandwiches. Yeah. They reached out to the pod and uh, we're like, if you guys need any food while you're there, we'd be happy to send it over. And uh, I didn't think we were going to have time. And then mom and dad and I went out for breakfast this morning and we came back uh, to the house and then we're sort of comfortable here. We didn't want to go anywhere. We were waiting for your arrival and it seemed like the perfect thing to do. So we reached out. Nick brought it over from the Forbes Avenue uh, location. I think he's the general manager over there. Thank you to Nick Rodler. We really enjoyed our sandwiches. Permani Brothers, if you're ever in the Berg, worth checking out. French fries on the sandwich. And, and coleslaw. coleslaw. And yeah. coleslaw and on coleslaw. the sandwich. Yeah. But dad, this is, I mean, we were out on Walnut Street in Shadyside last night, and this is your old yeah, neighborhood, I, essentially, or adjacent to. We, uh, I used to work on Walnut Street when I was in high school at a pharmacy. Uh-huh. The Walnut Pharmacy. I was uh, worked behind the counter, and I drove a Jeep when people used to get their drugs delivered. And uh, But Walnut Street has always been kind of a very interesting, trendy little few blocks of shops. There's an Apple store, for example, on Walnut Street now, and uh, just a place where there used to be lots of action. When you grew up, that just sold the fruit. The apple. <laughs> yeah, there was an apple. A different, yeah, different apple store. Yeah, I think it was called Ayanacos or something. Yeah, it was but now just it's a just... fruit shop. But now they have computers and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I love being here. I always like Shady Side. It's one of the things I always do when I come to Pittsburgh is come to Shady Side. And I used to go to the original, but it's not there anymore. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it was one of the deaths in COVID. And the original uh, was the greatest hot dog restaurant. I, mean, I know a lot of people will take issue with that choice, but I would say the greatest hot dog restaurant in America. Greatest yeah. hot dog I ever had. Yeah, for sure. And that's when it closed. That was when you officially said, well, I'll just be a vegan. I now. guess I'm vegan now. That was, yeah. that. That was be- the one thing you, wouldn't, you weren't willing to give up. <laughs> but when we were walking down, on, we were driving down Walnut Street last night, and then we took a walk, but you said it was just packed. When you were a kid, you couldn't. Yeah, it, every like Friday and Saturday night, the sidewalks were packed. Everybody just came here and walked around. There were lots of music venues, live mm-hmm. music venues here, jazz and uh, rock and roll and, and other things like that. I was too young to go into them mm-hmm. but that, at that point. But we, every time the door would open, you would hear music. And uh, yeah, it was just a really happening place. And it's, it's, it's gone through a lot of cycles over the years, but uh, it still seems to be a pretty, pretty nice neighborhood. Now, yeah. this is a, a very, I do, I do want to stress, because I have a, our relationship, you and I, Josh, with this city is so funny, because we were born near Chicago, Chicago suburb. Mm-hmm. Then we lived in Michigan, then New Hampshire, where mom and dad still are. We then both went back to school in Chicago. Yep. We then both lived in Amsterdam. And then you've spent the last 20 years in L.A., and I've spent the last 20 years in New York. And yet, weirdly, I feel more connection with Pittsburgh than any other, any other city in America. Anytime I see a for sale sign on a house, I'm like, well, maybe. Yeah. Like, I'm interested. I take a picture out the window of the airplane every time I fly in. I don't know who those pictures are for or uh-huh. what I'm ever going to use them for. Driving through the Fort Pitt Tunnel into the city is one of the great reveals of any American city. It's definitely. 
dad always says, it's the only city with front door. Front door. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so we, you know, mom and I, yeah, mom, dad, and I got in yesterday, and we. Uh, so yeah, we, we you know we drove around and we saw some stuff. And this morning we took a drive. We saw Dad's old childhood house, uh, one of the first houses that Mom and Dad both lived in. Got some good pictures of them. Yeah, and uh, I ran last year. I went for a run from downtown to uh, Liberty, which is how Pittsburgh people pronounce East Liberty. And I saw someone on Dad's old front porch um, smoking a joint. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I was like, good for them. Yeah, but the other thing in in Shady Side here, there's a real estate office and they have pictures like they do in many real estate offices of, of homes you can you can buy. In one line there were three homes. One is a stately old home called the King Estate. Oh yeah. Which is which is right near Highland Park and uh, it's on sale for three million dollars. It's a beautiful old home. We it's drove crazy. by it yeah, today. It's a seven used, bedroom just yeah, gorgeous. I used to thing. go sled riding there when I was a kid. The one in the middle was a, a house on on the south side of Pittsburgh, which is was an old area where there were a lot of mills, but it's been gentrified over the years. And the third place was on Lake Como in Italy. That's how we do it in Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's how we do it. You can get anything you want in Shady yeah. Side. Now I have a question, Dad. Did you ever? In a sliding doors version of your life, do you uh, think, oh, it would have been so great to raise my kids here in this city and, and never leave Pittsburgh? Or are you happy with the fact that you got out and, and have been in different places? It's interesting. I think when I was 18 years old and went to college and, and uh, at, at, out at Northwestern, I always thought I wanted to see a bigger world. I mean, we traveled a bit with my, my parents, mostly to Florida. But and in other areas around uh, sort of the Pittsburgh area, and, this has all so been forth. established in a previous family trips. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, oh, I probably didn't listen to that one. That's why I didn't know. Oh, it. I guarantee you listened to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess when I was younger, I wanted I wanted to to spread my wings a little bit. But I, I would have had no problem raising you guys up here in Pittsburgh. Mom, would you have been happy to live a life in Pittsburgh? I loved our time here. Yeah, we had a great time. Um, no, I would have wanted to branch out a bit. Today, we had the traditional car drive tour of all of Daddy's old places, which tended to feature girls that he made out with yeah. in eighth grade and seventh grade. I, this I is, never even kissed anybody till I was maybe 16, but this yeah. one was And then a, that's, the heartbreaking thing about that is I, you're 18 when you meet dad, right? <laughs> so there's a very small window of non-dad makeout uh, exactly, sessions. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was forced to settle for the bird guy. Yeah, you settle for the bird guy. Now, you are from Marblehead, Massachusetts. Yes, you love Marblehead. I do. But you don't love Marblehead as much as Dad loves Pittsburgh. Oh, I might. I think I might. I think she does. I do. Okay. There's less to root for in terms of like the Steelers oh, are right. sort of. There's no yeah. sports thing, but yeah. yeah. You like root for the American Revolution. <laughs> That's about the only thing. That was the last uh, last thing that was fought near Marblehead. The last hurrah, yeah. yes, of Marblehead. Dad, you also were recently, all three of you uh, were on our annual Thanksgiving show. Yes. Fantastic work. Thank, Thank you. you. There Thank was you. A, uh, a very funny comedy segment, and I can say that because I was not in it, called You Brined. All of you were great. Dad, you uh, you complained about the Steelers in the body of your brine, and one of our writers who's from Pittsburgh noted that your Pittsburgh accent came out a little bit. You were unaware of that. You don't realize unaware. that when you talk about the Steelers, it comes out a little bit. No, I didn't notice that when I was doing it at first. I, I, and he said that to me, and I thought— no, I should have thought of that, and I should I should have talked more like us from the bird, but I didn't do it. I feel bad about that now. No, I do. I really. I the feel funny bad. thing is, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, people literally do talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny when we were landing. We 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 landed. We flew from Boston, and uh, the the flight attendant that was wishing everybody a, a good day, she said, "Yins have a good day." Oh. Uh, so yeah. she'd been here before. Yes. There you go. We're taking advantage of the extra space here. And yes. uh, we have begun, and I know this is going to be crushing to our podcast listeners that we don't have a final score of our Scrabble game. Mm. We have started our first Scrabble game. Dad's out to an early lead. Dad's out to an early lead, although if it's time that it takes you to make a move, mom is and clearly yeah. winning. If you, yeah, you would say she's dominated the game. <laughs> yeah. There's also, we have a, a beautiful deluxe uh, spinning Scrabble board, yes. which I highly recommend when you're at a table. And... Uh, 
Every time I've spun it, I've knocked over mom's tiles. She doesn't realize she has to move it out of the spin zone. So, that, I mean, other than that, she's off to a hot start. Also, anytime you play Scrabble with mom, every the, the amount she blames, dumb luck. Oh, yeah. You know, I, get, I went first and she sighed about that. Oh, yeah. And you know if dad has the Q or the J, we're yeah. going to be hearing about that. I no. got, yeah, I got a, a triple word on my, oh, my first And then she, she, she's always looking yeah. for someone to blame. Yeah. She's like, Why who set him up? You, yeah. set you him did. Up. You set you him set up. up. I was, look, this, just, this is how words work. What do you think about the word QI, hurry? Oh, nonsense. No, yeah. but what do you call it? What do you call it? Bullshit. Yeah, yeah it's a bullshit yeah. word. <laughs> it was very nice of you to try to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our sponsor was like, please remind your mother. <laughs> all right, so this is, um, this first of all, is lovely. And I, we should know, this will air a little bit later. We are going to a game tomorrow. It will be the Steelers versus the Arizona Cardinals. So <gasps> you listening to this know if we had a nice Sunday or if this whole trip was for naught. I would like to think that I'm capable of having a nice Sunday regardless of the outcome. And I know that's not the case for you or dad. No. No, It is for me. It is for me. Not only will it ruin Sunday. (laughs) Oh, here we go. It will ruin me a river. I don't think you should go to the game. I think you should just stay here. It'll It'll ruin the week. Yeah, I can't. I can't read the sports page. It'll ruin the week if they lose, and especially if they lose to the Cardinals. It's a very grown up. It's awful. Yes. By the way, I want to say one. It's true, and two, I don't like it about myself. I'm not walking out in the street saying I'm the better of the ver- version. Yeah, I hate, and I'm. You know, I had. Ki- I've got three kids now. I don't want to lose my Sunday. Yeah. I've tried so many different ways of trying to temper the way I feel about it. And it, I feel like somebody's like, so I just do cocaine at breakfast. <laughs> like that's, nothing I do makes it any better. I'll tape the game. I'll watch it later when the kids are asleep. I'll only follow on social media and nothing works. If I tape the game and I know I'm going to watch it later and I'll be with the kids trying to give them my full focus, I just look in their faces and all I want to say is, do you know the score? <laughs> <laughs> do you got, have you got anything? Tell me. No, don't tell me. Only tell me if it's good. Oh, well, then I'll know it's bad if you don't say anything. So I, anyway, so dad and I will be living or dying uh, with the actual result of the game. And again, if you're, if you're uh, listening, you live in Arizona and, and you're rooting for them, just, you know, give us this one. You guys got the fucking Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> you're winners every day. Which, yeah. Speaking of the Grand Canyon, I do want to mention, um, you know, because Primanti Brothers sent us food today, but also yeah. the Grand Canyon did reach out. And they sent us a message that you read in a previous podcast. And then at the end of it, you were like, and they say, meet us in an unmarked white van at the airport. But I do want to tell the good folks at the Grand Canyon Conservancy who offered to, you know, give us a tour. I'm interested. We're interested. Yeah. Um, I'm in. I'm in for that. And we want to make that happen. I'm not taking a donkey to the bottom. Uh, And just so you know, our mother will not take a donkey (laughs) to the bottom. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But I didn't want. So we will uh, need uh, three donkeys and a stretch limousine. (laughs) Yeah. She'll, yeah, you'll ride an ass though, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she married one. There we go. Uh, With uh, that way, so that's. I, I thought I'd get that out before she did. Yeah, so. that was a very smart move. Yeah. Uh. So anyway, one of the things we asked for um, our listeners, knowing that this special episode was coming up, is if they had any questions for our parents. So we've really enjoyed these uh, listener-inspired episodes, and now we're going to ask our producer Sam to play the first question. Hello, Myers Brothers. Similar to you guys, my dad raised my brother and I outside of Pittsburgh, specifically Philly, but we're huge Steelers fans. And my question is, do you remember your first Steeler game together? I know for me, I'll never forget taking the Clipper over to Heinz and scalping some tickets. We went to a couple playoff games and just so incredibly fun. Just curious if you guys had that same experience. Cheers. I went to a Steelers game with dad first without you. What? Yeah. (laughs) It was, well, so we each got high school trips. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys went skiing. Yeah, we did. We went to Taos, New Mexico. Very active. Uh Uh-huh. I wanted to come to Pittsburgh. This would have been 1990. We saw a Steelers-Chargers game. That was our first game in Pittsburgh. And the Steelers won, which was very exciting. We also then went to a couple of Pittsburgh Pirate playoff games against the Cincinnati Reds. And uh, that was ultimately a a National League Championship Series the Pirates lost, but I believe we saw one win, one loss maybe. And the one thing I remember about that trip is I had a history of being a a procrastinator in school, and Dad said, I'm going to bring you 
but you have to do your homework. This can't be a situation where you don't do anything. And I didn't do anything. And it was months later, I got just terrible grades. And I remember I actually, he goes, what happened? And I was like, well, we took that trip. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you were so mad. You were like, I told you, could you use that as an excuse? <laughs> but the first game we actually went to that was a Steelers game was not in Pittsburgh. It was in, oh, Detroit. 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 Thanksgiving. We went on Thanksgiving Day uh, to the worst loss in Pittsburgh Steelers. 45 to 3. 45 to 3. Yeah, we were living in Michigan at the time. Detroit Lions always play on Thanksgiving Day. And it was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go to the game. I, and my mother was with us. Uh, what was it? Silverdome? Yep. And we were in the very last row. At the very top, as I remember. Let's just say our seats are going to be a little bit better <laughs> tomorrow. Um, this is actually interesting, though, because again, the Steelers were not a good football team then when we went. Yeah, like this no, was no. not. This was. This They're was, not in the seventies. And no. this was the worst era, maybe of yeah. the Steelers. So we yeah. didn't have. It would have been nice if we won, but it, it, the stakes were fairly low. To the point that you actually, I remember that day, I was beside myself, upset. And you were in a better mood. And I remember the thing you said as we walked out of the stadium. You looked at me and you said, welcome to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we never came to Pittsburgh to go to a game when we were littler. No. I don't recall. No. But I just, we went to baseball games. We went to baseball rivers. games, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I can remember my first Steeler game was with my dad. My dad was a season ticket holder from the Steelers from when they were founded in the— In, like, 39? Thir- in 39, whenever yeah. it was. And they played at Forbes Field, where the Pirates used to play. It's a baseball field, really. And what I remember about going to those games, because my dad would go with, with other people, adults, but he would take me to a game, and the Steelers were truly terrible— in the, in the 50s, we would go and it was freezing because I would always just go to a late season game when no other adults wanted to go. Mm-hmm. You know, it was probably a 12 game season there and the Steelers had won two games. And what I remember most vividly is being freezing cold, number one, having to walk a long distance to the game because my dad had a place he could park for free. Uh-huh making it worse being cold, and that they had hot chocolate in little cans that were about the size of a can of tomato paste, and the way they heated the hot chocolate up was to put those cans in boiling water. Jeez. And so the cans were hot to the touch, but you had gloves on because it was cold. And yeah. so the good news was that you could hold the cans so they were like a hand warmer. Uh-huh. And then you would drink the hot chocolate and it would scald the skin off the roof of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. We also, we drove down and like slept out at the stadium, Seth and I, to get tickets for, was it a wild card game? No, we went to the AFC Championship game, which we lost to the Chargers in 1992. Yeah. yeah. No, 94. 95, sorry, 95. And yeah, because of that beatdown, the Chargers had a not very well-known tight end named Alfred Papunu. Yep. And he just torched us for that game. And I was uh, pledging my and your fraternity at the time, and Alfred Papunu is my pledge name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Papunu. laughs> Fiji. Um, that was, I remember that we drove from Chicago to that game with dad's oldest friend, Denny Miller. And we were so excited. Huge favorites against the Chargers. It was a crushing, crushing loss. Lost in the last play of the game. We uh, had a chance to win. Uh, ball knocked down in the end zone. And I remember driving back, and Denny was the opposite of, I'll keep these kids' spirits up. Because he drove back, and the whole drive, he's like, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> just the whole drive, the whole eight-hour drive, he's like, I might have to pull over and throw up. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, all right. So that was, yeah, a lot of lot of memories. Lots of memories. Um, yeah. But, man, we're, I'm so excited for this game tomorrow. I love, I love going to see the Steelers, man. Oh, me too. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. All right, next question. Hi, inquiring minds would like to know what your parents did for their honeymoon. All right. Mm. What did you guys do for your honeymoon? Okay, so we didn't have any money at the time, and a relative of my mom gave us a beautiful house on in Hamilton, Mass., on a little river, wasn't it? Larry? No, it was on a lake. It was on a lake. Okay. And the house was next to a beautiful house. <laughs> <laughs> it was. A, it had a, a view of a beautiful house. Oh, good view of the beautiful house. Well, we were given this house for three months, so this was a good deal. Whoa. Yeah, just one little quick question. The, the house was owned by the people that owned the beautiful house. They were friends of your family. And they said, we could have it. We just had to get it in shape. And my friend, same friend, Denny, 
we went in there and it took us like days to clean the spiders out and then and to clean it up and it was it was fine once we fixed it up but it was designed because the second floor probably had what would you say 20 or 30 beds that, yeah like bunk beds and single iron beds yeah it so was, it was like a camp it was a camp yeah mm. but that wasn't that so the honeymoon we knew we had this thing and we had no money but we went to boston and stayed at a nice hotel and we went to Trader Joe's Trader Vicks. Vicks. Trader Vicks, Trader Vicks for dinner and had one of those big poo poo no not the poo poo scorpion, scorpion, scorpion bowls. Oh yeah. my gosh. And Larry's not a big drinker, but of course, you know me, I can hold my liquor. <laughs> so I got Larry a little shickered. And <laughs> and then I remember being in our bedroom. And I mean, I, we're kids. I'm 22. And as we've already established, I didn't kiss anybody till I was 16. Yeah. So all of a sudden, this, the maid, I'm just going to just <laughs> wherever this is going, just remember we're both your children. I know. <laughs> no, but the door, dad, it turns out the maid just walks right in. And I said, Larry, he said, Oh, I forgot to lock the door. So there we are. In our honeymoon. I was watching a pirate game, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I remember. The other thing I remember about that, the night that we went to Trader uh, Vix. Vix, Vix, we also went to the movies. We did. And was- we saw MASH. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah we saw Great MASH. Movie. Yeah. And we only spent one night there. And then we went back to, to this place on the lake. And a bunch of the people that had come to our wedding, which were college and, and high school friends in my case, they all came up and stayed there for a couple of days. But I remember too, I, it was my, I had a Mustang at the time, or maybe it was the white Camaro. No, the Mustang. But they had attached, our friends had attached the cans like they used to do. Mm-hmm. And they had in shaving cream on the back, you know, just married. And it like took the paint right off the car. And yeah. I thought, is this supposed to? And then you're driving into Boston, 128. That's a busy road. Clang, clang, clang. And they were those, uh, they were those tiny hot, hot chocolate cans. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You tried to take them off. But they you couldn't, you couldn't touch them. Yeah. You couldn't touch them. Yeah. I will tell you, the idea of going to Trader Vic's and then watching MASH is... Uh, that would have been my dream honeymoon. <laughs> I had to go to Machu Picchu. <laughs> Talk about a family trip. Yeah. But I want to tell you two other things about that honeymoon that are, that are relevant. Number one is uh, on this lake, there was a little dock. And at one point I, I stepped off and there was a foundation block that was like on an angle. And I, I slit the bottom of my foot open. I uh-huh. remember that. And the other thing is I got a, a fish bone stuck in my throat. Yeah. Remember oh, that? And we had to go to the hospital and they pulled it out. But uh, otherwise, it was a good time. You know, they, there's an old wives' tale that if on your honeymoon, your husband gets a fishbone caught in his throat, that means he's a catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say maybe he wouldn't talk so much, but it didn't work out to be no, that I was way. like, what do you, what do you, uh, <laughs> when he slid his foot, that must have been so exciting. That was the first time you heard your husband say, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Not the last. Not the last. Not the last. Not the last. Not oh. the last. Do we need to take you to get this bone removed from your throat? <laughs> so, no, no. He just kept talking and his throat crushed. Yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> it's grounded. I'll force it out. I'll force it out by talking. grounded into dust. Because we're talking about honeymoons, I just want to, Ask we well, obviously I think all our listeners know Josh got engaged this year very exciting. How often are people asking you about wedding plans and you all, ju- all the time? Is it do you hate it? Well, I just don't have answers for them, yeah. so it, I feel like I'm disappointing them. You just spend a lot of time with your fiance's family, and so I imagine. But they know that they know the score because they right right yeah. Um, so it's it's people outside the immediate family that are yeah yeah yeah. I get it because it probably seems like a nice small talk thing to say. But then if you don't have answers. Well, my be. buddy Randy Suazo just uh, texted me. He's like, hey, I hear you set a date. Congratulations. And I'm like, no, where'd you hear that? And he said he heard it on your show. And I'm like, no, you misheard it. Yeah. <laughs> people ask us all the time. That I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people ask us. Yeah. Why do they all care? I know. I, mean, I know. I mean, yeah. All your friends, they're not getting invited. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let's hear our next one. Hi. My request would be, or my question would be, to your mom, you want to go day drinking? <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> um, there's not much I love more than day drinking. There is a very, one of the first day drinkings was yes. me and you. Yeah. And I very worth going back and watching. It was very fun and, and great. Yeah. We started like 11, 10 in the morning. Yeah. And, and you, I remember you saying it was a little late. 
<laughs> you said I can be there at nine. We got there and you'd already, we were on first name basis with the bartender. Yeah, and then you guys went out to lunch afterwards and she ordered a That's drink. the thing. Yeah, usually at the end of day drinking, I'm barely, uh, you know, ambulatory. And we go out to lunch and hurry, orders another gin and tonic. <laughs> Her Trader Vic's order, by the way, is Scorpion Bowl, one straw. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we did, like, one of the perks of, of this Airbnb, they reached out and they were like, do you need any groceries? So I gave them a list of some things that we wanted for breakfast just to have some snacks around. And then... I rolled the dice and I was like, and maybe some gin and tonic stuff and a bottle of scotch. And so it was here. And, uh, it was here. Yeah. But they didn't have enough tonic. So I actually had to go out and get tonic today. Mm-hmm. So I, that was part of my, my mission uh, was to go get tonic. All right. Well, mm-hmm. gold go. star. Yeah, real. I guess somebody's <laughs> looking for a pat on the back here. <laughs> Holy. One of the problems of when you order two days worth of gin for mom, the owner of the home called and said, you can't have 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a oh, limit to how many people boy. can stay there. Yeah. <laughs> the burns are coming. It's Ford Field Hot Jar. Uh, All right, so it's a hardcore yes on will my mom go day drinking with you? Yes. Yeah, although, yeah, we're recording this, it's 3 40 in the afternoon. Have you had a drink yet today? Uh, Yeah, I had a beer with lunch and I just had a gin and tonic, but this is vacation. This is vacation. vacation. I'm not not critical. Yeah, Um, at home, I wouldn't have had anything yet. Okay. I wait till around 5. Well, 5 30. Yeah, oh, yeah, for Pardon the Interruption. Yeah, we have a beer at, and watch Pardon the Interruption. That's whatever time, if, if it's later, we tape it and we watch it. But that, that's definitely Hillary's first drink of the day, yeah. for sure. It's a tradition. Yeah. It's fun. You should go day drinking with uh, Wilbon and Kornheiser. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Plus, he's the, the, the Wilbon is the uh, Northwestern guy. He's Northwestern guy as well. That's yeah. the best. He yeah. wears purple so well. Yeah, he certainly <laughs> does. Yeah. Um, go Cats. Go Cats. Let's hear our next one. Hi, Myers family. I'm looking forward to seeing you around Pittsburgh, maybe. I have uh, one question and uh, one Steelers-related anecdote. The anecdote is my kids went to elementary school, and I think even high school, with Coach Cower's kids. So Bill Cower was always scowling on TV, and that was the picture I had of him. And uh, when my kids were about five and seven there was a school festival that we were going to and I was coming out of the parking lot heading down a hill holding my five-year-old's hand and coach Cower came purposefully striding towards the parking lot across the hill wearing his usual scowl I was a little intimidated although all of the moms that I ever talked to were talking about the crushes they had on him. But anyway, my five-year-old pulled away from me, running straight down the hill into the path of Coach Cower. And he, at the last second, saw my son and adjusted his stride so that my son ran underneath his legs. And then he turned to me and just gave me the biggest, widest grin that I'd ever seen. And I realized why all the moms had a crush on Bill Cower. (laughs) The question is... Where about in Pittsburgh did Larry grow up, and where did he and Hillary meet? Well, I grew up uh, in East Liberty on Heberton Street, right, uh, three houses away from Dilworth School. I went to Peabody High School, which is now called the Obama Academy. Uh, Hillary and I met at Northwestern University, where we were in an English class together freshman year. Go Cats again. And uh, eventually, after after Northwestern, we lived in Pittsburgh together for two years. We lived on Highland Avenue, right near Highland Park. And I went to Carnegie Mellon for uh, graduate school for two years. And and Hillary was a teacher uh, here in town. Yeah, reading teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Up in Knoxville. Knoxville, yeah. yeah. Half time at a Catholic school. In, uh, where was that? The West End, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So And she said, oh, I got a job I'm going to teach in Knoxville. I had lived here my whole life. I thought, we're moving to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, but I didn't even know about the Knoxville area. It was, but see, the one thing about my father was born in the Hill District, and my mother was from Sharpsburg. So the fact that my father actually crossed the river to go to Sharpsburg to, to meet my mother is an amazing thing in and of itself. Because if he had to go across a bridge, he needed a three-day weekend. <laughs> My interesting Bill Cower story, and I love Bill Cower, and had him on my show, unfortunately, during COVID. 
so I uh, didn't have him there, but he wrote a book and, and got to talk to him. I love Bill Cower. But his grandchild was born the same day as Ash on the same floor of the hospital. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, it's, um, and when, I, when I found that out, it was uh, almost more exciting than the birth of my own son. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Hi, this is Jenna from Chicago. I have a question for the Myers parents. So I'm loving the podcast. I love when y'all are on. And I have two boys like you with the same age gaps, but they're younger. They're four and one. And you've done such a great job raising two wonderful boys. And I wanted to know, how do you do that? Like, what is the secret to success on raising such wonderful kids? Because, you know, I've still got time. Mine are four and one. So any advice would be appreciated. Thanks. I think we were blessed. Our boys were always the best of friends and very little uh, argument or fighting over anything. I was a soft touch. Larry was a disciplinarian, so we kind of divided those duties. They knew there were very strong boundaries of things they could and couldn't do. And really, I think the the main thing was that there was just so much love between them, and I think love in our family, which has obviously continued to this day. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh boy. There we go. <laughs> no, I, I, it's just, you know, when you're, you don't get a manual when you're a parent. So you, you just kind of, kind of wing it. But I, I do think it's fair to say that, uh, the way my parents were with me, I didn't try to emulate everything they did. I don't think you try to emulate everything that, you know, certainly Hillary and I did. So you find your own way about it. But I do think a couple things were, because we never had, as Hillary indicated, very many problems. And when she said I was a disciplinarian, it wasn't like I was smacking them around or anything like that. But I didn't make idle threats. Yes. If, if I said, If you had to do something, whatever it was, and you didn't do it, there would be a consequence. It wouldn't be terrible. You know, it wouldn't be abusive, but there'd be a consequence. And I do remember when when Hillary went back to work as a teacher, she had taken several years off when you guys were young. We said, well, you guys have to do chores. You have to do more chores because mom's going to be busier at night, going to do homework, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I said, you have to do the dishes. And doing the dishes was not actually washing them, just cleaning the table and putting them in the dishwasher. That mm-hmm. was your job. And I said, yeah, so I don't care. Hard. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. That's what you said at the time. <laughs> yeah. He cool. just started to cry. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I said, I don't care if you do it together every night, take turns every other day, every other week. I don't care. You figure it out, but that's your job. But I do remember coming home, one week, like a Friday night or something, we were out. You had had a babysitter and, and whatever. And because you weren't old enough to be by yourself, but you were old enough to have these chores. So when you went back to school, what grade were you in, Seth, when she was back to work? Fourth. Uh, yeah, fourth. Fourth. So, you, so you're about 10. You're about eight. And uh, we came home, and there were some dishes in the sink. It was like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. I went up. I woke you up, brought you downstairs, made you put the the dishes in because that was your job. So there was always a consequence and no, no idle threats. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know how you remember it. I mean. No, that's, that sounds right. There, I would agree that there were no idle uh, threats. I don't ever remember negotiating down a predetermined or a pre-agreed Just, upon punishment. That yeah, was always no, the way it went. No, yeah. The punishment re- was well known, yeah. Yeah, but I remember I did so poorly on a test the day after you woke me up in the middle of the night to do those dishes <laughs> yeah. in you second grade. You got held back a grade, right? I got held back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah uh, you're lucky you you're lucky got into college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that, those my, are consequences. You're two years younger than me and five years behind me in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All from that one I'm night. Still, yeah, yeah, I still have still. to finish up some credits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had a funny thing uh, talking about parenting styles, which is Ash, the seven-year-old, is very sweet with Addie, the two-year-old. And this is the first time I feel like I got a parenting note from Ash because Addie, the boys eat vitamins in the morning and Addie has one. And so Ash went and actually got the one she has and he gave it to her and she goes, I want more, I want more vitamin. And he goes, Addie, you just get one vitamin. And she goes, okay. And then he looks at me and goes, See if you say it like that. <laughs> she understands. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> it sounds pretty condescending. Oh, I was uh, dripping with condescension. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> dripping with it. Before we go to our next recorded message, some of you emailed in some questions as well. Mm. 
Since Hillary was a French teacher, did you guys ever go to France or French-speaking parts of Canada to practice your French language skills? That was not a... No. We did Quebec once, did we? Or is that just no, you? that was no, me and my family, no. my sisters. We did no. go to France one time. Mm-hmm. And it was so hot. Oh, my gosh. Remember yeah. that place? And the Pope was there. It yes. was terrible. It was just the most sweaty Catholic vacation. <laughs> and I always remember that you get a little flustered when it's time to order in French. For me to do yeah, the order? Yeah, I think especially in front of us, with us as your audience. Oh, because okay. we're like, all right, yeah. madame. Bring it on. Let's, let's see, see it. it. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, you're, that's probably fair. That's yeah. probably fair. But yeah. no, we never, we didn't do. No. Yeah, because the Pope was there, there were no hotels. Yeah. And yeah. We, we ended up in this real small, you know, definitely not three-star, two-star. No, I don't know what they have below one. Maybe a triangle. It, was it, was, a, it had like an interior courtyard, yeah. and everyone's uh, hotel room opened up into it's the a, center, and yeah. everyone's doors were open because it was so hot. Yeah, so was, hot. yeah that's yeah. the only time I've ever been to Paris. Yeah, and the second day we realized at the uh, check-in you could ask for a fan. So mm. most people had fans. We didn't even have a fan. I think we went to bed. We all took showers and went to bed wet. Yeah. yeah. Just because, yeah, which that didn't was, really that work. It seemed either. like a good idea at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember you would write us little phrase books before we went, such as, uh, Avez-vous gin and tonic? <laughs> <laughs> Ma mère veut un gin and tonic. <laughs> Is that right? Où est le fan? Où est, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you for the bon question. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Merci. Yeah, obviously, uh, the, the French stuck pretty well. Uh, here's another good one. Who behaved worse on road trips, Seth or Josh? I don't know. That's a, a, a tough one. I don't Let's recall. Let's say Josh then. <laughs> I, I don't recall really bad behavior. Yeah, I, 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 I can recall unusual behavior because we used to go away. And this sort of ties into the whole trip here to Pittsburgh because we used to go away in the April vacation for school and usually go to somewhere where there's a beach, Mm -hmm. Florida, the Bahamas, something like that. And we would all be on the beach and it was the NFL draft. And Seth would spend, because it wasn't like a long three-day or four-day thing like it is now. And Seth would be inside watching the draft waiting to see who the Steelers would pick. Then he would come out and tell us who it was, and then he would go back inside and spend the whole day watching the draft. Yeah. How is this bad behavior? I said it was unusual. <laughs> he said he, he teed it up as unusual. Mm. Yeah. Are your headphones hooked into this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you listening to, yeah, what are you over, listening to over there? <laughs> There's some nonsense coming from my oh, right. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's hear another uh, recorded question. Hi, uh, my name is Haley, and I am a lifelong Pittsburgher and very proud of it. And I just have to say that I wanted to clear something up that I think your dad said on that very first episode when you had them on, when you asked him if he thought Pittsburgh was a good place to visit, and he said no. And I just have to say, I want to clear the air there because I think Pittsburgh is an amazing place to visit, whether you're with your friends friends or coming with your family. There is no shortage of things to do here. I am a very proud Yinzer and will tell anybody who asks me if Pittsburgh is a place to visit that yes, it is absolutely worth a visit. So I just wanted to clear the air there because I don't think we gave Pittsburgh its flowers and I wanted to make sure that it got it. Big fan of the pod. You guys are great. Thank you guys so much. Well, first of all, I'm already married to Hillary, so I can't take that criticism from you. (laughs) That's her job. (laughs) Don't try to usurp my wife's role. Um, First of all, I don't remember. Just for uh, uh, since it's a non-visual podcast, my mom is rolling her eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I I think she's ordered another gin. (laughs) (laughs) First of all, I don't remember. I don't remember saying that, and I would never say that. I think that Pittsburgh is. an incredible city, and I think it's a surprise. People that have never been here are always surprised. And I can recall a a trip before I retired with some of my colleagues from New York, and we came here on business. I think we were seeing Alcoa and uh, some other Pittsburgh-based company, maybe PPG or something like that. Flex. That's a flex. And we 
w- were walking around, and the, these guys were like in their mid thirties. They couldn't believe it. They didn't. Their image of Pittsburgh was steel mills and that. And we walked. We had some time. We walked along the river. We went literally and stood on the point. Mm-hmm. They were just. Uh, they were very surprised at what Pittsburgh was. And and I think you know it's got great sports. It's got great culture. It's got great neighborhoods. How many bridges would it have? Put it in relation to another city, maybe an Italian one. Uh, probably next to Venice. Nobody has more. I think there's seven hundred bridges. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know what the biggest bridge is? What's that? The Pittsburgh Steelers. That's the bridge. Huh? The Pittsburgh Steelers. He's be poetic. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers are the bridge for all of us that don't live here. In the city of Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I don't recall you saying the that either. fire forges <laughs> the toughest steel. <laughs> Play Renegade now. Yeah. I've always loved coming here. And also, I feel like living in Los Angeles, anytime there's a sporting event, they're cutting to a commercial, they might show the Hollywood sign, which I live very close to, or the Santa Monica Pier. They're sort of all these landmarks. And similarly in Pittsburgh, they always show a place and I'm always like, oh yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Shot of the incline, a shot of the point. Yeah. I also think in recent years, even living in New York, you read about how there's a, a bustling, or I don't know if that's the right word, but there's a great new restaurant scene. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not going to make it this year, but last year we went to a fantastic, we read about it at New York Times, one of the best new restaurants of the year at Tepka. Yeah. It was a wonderful uh, vegan restaurant we went to on behalf of Josh's veganism, but I think we all had a great meal. Yeah, it was vegan delicious. Polish. So, uh, yeah, it's a really cool place. And, you know, even um, East Liberty, where you grew up, that is, you know, now this a completely different neighborhood. And, yeah. and it's a cool, young, it's it's a tech-friendly, bike-friendly city. It's it's great. I think two times on our visits, we've gone to the Warhol Museum, which is wonderful. Yeah, the best. Um, yeah. It was raining last time I think we were here. We went to the Carnegie Museum, the Art Museum. Yeah. It's always good. I always feel great coming home. Always yeah. feel I really, great. I, I'm going to listen back to that episode to hear you run down Pittsburgh. I'm I shocked. can't believe it. I'm yeah. shocked that he said it. <laughs> this yeah. might be a situation where mom got her hands on some AI. <laughs> <laughs> mom might have, mom might have, might have a deep fake dad. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you where I, where I don't like Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Pittsburgh is a bad place. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's see if we have another question. Hi, Pashi, Sufi, and Pankas. This is Brendan from Ontario, Canada, with a question about one of my favorite topics, dogs. Over the last decade of Myers Family holiday appearances, we've heard a lot about the dogs in the Myers Family. I myself am particularly fond of Albert. My question is, did you ever take your dogs on vacation with you? If so, how did that go? If not, who watched them for you? Did they do a good job? It's been years now. You can be honest if they didn't. And did your pet sitter ever tell you a funny story about something the dog did while you were away on vacation? And as a bonus question, does Frisbee travel well? Remember the trip that you boys complained about, the Molasses Pond adventure, one of the reasons that I loved it so much was we al- we were allowed to take Albert, who was at that time, I don't know, eight or so, but a big boy. Albert pounds. Albert, Albert the one. first, yeah. yeah. And he had a great time. There's pictures of him getting in a canoe, and he was r- <laughs> he was running around like a wild boy. You didn't have to worry about him, but otherwise, you can't take hundred pound dogs on trips with you. So no. I can't remember any other one. I also think. If you're going to stay with other people, it's very imposing uh, to take your dog. And so we have well, have had great dog sitters for years, and they've really uh, been wonderful with the dogs. And uh, for many, many years, they stayed at our house because they one was a college student and who later on had, had a job. But we had an invisible fence. The dogs, because we had two dogs for many of these years, could be outdoors during the day. And even now we have uh, two different dog sitters that we use. And just today we got pictures from a dog sitter of, of Albert uh, being on the floor with a very small baby on its uh, hands and knees and Albert's licking this baby's face and the baby's laughing. And yeah, uh, yeah, they send us stuff every day. We're very fortunate because we do like to travel and knowing that, uh, that Albert is, uh, is well cared for is uh, we wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Frisbee travels very well. She's very easy to bring on trips. She's also very easy to forget on trips. (laughs) Well, because she Frisbee Seth's seven pound Italian Greyhound. Yeah will climb onto a couch and just wants a blanket to be put on top of her. Yeah, she's very invisible. 
Yeah. She's living an invisible existence as a dog. Most, I think she's on uh, basically a, a work stoppage due to the fact that we keep having children. <laughs> <laughs> she, because she was, we treated her like a child and then we had real children. And I think it dawned on her. She was like, wait a second, am I a fucking dog? <laughs> Have I been one this whole time? There have been a couple of times where we've driven away from our in law's house and then realized, you know, three kids in a car and but one she, of them. You left her on a boat one night, didn't you? We'll edit that out. <laughs> I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I swear to God, I wasn't there. We're still going to edit it out, but that one's not on me. A lot's on me, but that's not on me. When we were just visiting you over Thanksgiving, I think we got there on Thanksgiving morning. And I think it was like Saturday morning where I said, where's Frisbee? Because I had literally not seen the dog for two days. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty quiet these days. And if Mackenzie had her way, she would always travel with the dogs. She took Debbie to Montana to a horse show, and we might go away for New Year's with the dogs. But I don't love traveling with dogs because then I feel weird leaving them yeah. in an apartment or at, certainly at a hotel would be even weirder. Oh, impossible. But we have brought them to some places. And it is nice to have them, but then you just have to get over the fact that it might be strange for them to be in a new place. And I will say, Airbnb is going to be a lot more oh, pet friendly. Yeah. A lot more pet friendly than a hotel. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And it's also, a house. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. house. Also, if, if maybe you need to do some laundry, it's nice to do laundry. Whereas at a hotel, they're like, oh, it's T-shirt would be twelve dollars to launder yeah. for you. Like, oh, so we're gonna iron it so it'll look weird. <laughs> when you wear it, it'll be clean, but it'll be boxy and weird, weird creases. Oh, I had another uh, question, and I'll tell you this one. If you guys get this one wrong, oh, I got a real issue. I'm walking right out of this podcast. What was the most unreasonable request Seth Josh made as kids? Well, it doesn't have to be a specific request, but who made more unreasonable requests? Well, it sounds like you've made up your mind, huh? I have. Are you kidding me? I need, I need a room where I can watch the football draft. <laughs> I didn't ask for it. I just disappeared. I remember one specific unreasonable request that you made, Seth. Is what we How was this turning on me? <laughs> uh, I, I know where you were going, but okay. I just happened to remember it as being unreasonable. When we moved from Michigan oh, to New this. Hampshire— you guys were pretty young, uh, second and fourth grade. And, and I was saying, so we're going to move. It's going to be exciting, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I said, what, what, what kind of house do you want? And you said, I want a blue house yep. with a round door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little hobbit. Uh, yeah. We're going to live, yeah, we're going to live it in was, the Shire. It was like Beatrice Potter. It was New Potter. Hampshire. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. I thought it was a little, I kind of thought a round door would be great. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, well, what I, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know. You, you always wanted shit. Like, yeah, so it's like guinea pig, a rabbit. Like the whole house stunk, and there were people screeching every time you open. I mean, it was, I never asked for anything. <laughs> 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 to this day, I want these comics, and I want. <laughs> well, I, well, I pay for them with these, my own money. <laughs> I want these colored pencils. <laughs> you know what I wanted when I got allergy tests and I was allergic to dogs? I wanted to live in a dog-free home. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even get that. Yeah. I had bad asthma. Still do, but it's a lot better now because um, I don't have a sheepdog in my home. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we dad took me to get, you know, that scratch tests yeah. for allergies where, you know, they. I wonder if they even still do it. Yeah, it I seems do. dated, but, you know, like 32 different, you know, and it's like all of a sudden there's a big, you know, splotch for ragweed and yeah. dander. And then the biggest one, uh, my dad's like, well, what's that? Our dad. You. <laughs> my dad. Uh, I go, which one's that? And uh, he goes, that's dogs. And I remember on the drive home, you saying, so we're not going to get rid of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to stop eating ragweed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if we have another recorded message. This is a question for Seth's family. This may stir up a bit of trouble, but I think it's a good one. So for Seth and Josh, it is, at what point in your life were you the happiest with your parents? And at what point were you the most aggravated with your parents? And I would ask the same of your parents about both of you. Oh, look at that. I turned the tables. Yeah. Which birthday was it? We all came home for your birthday. Seventy. And we were in New Hampshire. Yeah. With surprise party. Both of us surprised you. He he had been there for the whole week. Oh, right. And, and then you, I, I drove in the night at party and surprised yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And I just remember us going back home. Mm -hmm. 
and the dogs were there, and we were all a little, we you know, tipsy. We were a little tipsy, a little tipsy, and we just were playing John Prine songs and just screaming the lyrics together. Yeah. And we, I mean, songs we'd all listened to a million times, and not one of them did we know more than 40% of the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, but there was right. no, no effort was made to not give it a full-throated singing. I and remember you made a video of us, Little Fishies, what's the yeah. what's See, exactly, yeah. Little Fishies. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but it was a really late night. It was a really late night and a really great night. And that was pretty great. And the other one for me was, and I... I maybe told this story before, but the four of us on my wedding day, the four of us were sitting, you know, an hour before the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, what was it like the two years I was gone? Because that to me is still the most fascinating time in this family. I yeah. was at college and the three of you lived together. And I'm, I'm just so curious. I was like, what was it like? And you guys all said the sweetest thing which is you had no memory of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that strange. meant so much to me. I mean, I see, you know, friends of mine who have kids in high school now, and you just become more independent the older you get, the closer you get to going off to college or whatever it is you might do after uh, your senior year in high school. So I think I was so busy my junior and senior year with student council and like any other, you know, plays, things that I was doing that uh, I don't have a lot of clear memories of what it was like to be home without you. Yeah. And then if I could just jump to the most aggravated was that, Night dad couldn't put five dishes away. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how mad and sad you both were to leave Michigan. And it broke my heart. And years later, clearing out like your old journals and things like that. I mean, you wrote about it in great length. I can't believe mom and dad are taking us away from all that we love. And it never happened to me. I lived in my same house my whole childhood. And I, I felt so guilty. Like, is there any way we could we could have not done this? Yeah. And there wasn't. It was just And it was the halfway. Way. We, we moved in the middle of a school year as well. Yeah, it was January. Yeah, it was January. It was so awful we, cold. And yeah. it was, yeah, it was awful. But it was, I mean, I should say. I think for both of us, we we clicked into New Hampshire yes, right away. Yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember one thing. It's not, it, it was a period when you were in seventh grade where um, you mentioned homework before and you were a huge procrastinator. Yeah. And uh, it, it would drive me crazy. And then you're in school where mom's teaching. And so all the people that are your teachers are her colleagues. And we're getting these report cards that you're getting – good grades, but they're saying, yeah, but he turns in his homework late. He doesn't do this. And and it used to really bother me. And, and I, I used to kind of be on you about that a lot throughout mm -hmm. the year. And uh, at the end of the year, you uh, wrote something. And I, I'm not going to be able to recall exactly what it was, but it was about the family. And you got an A++. And at the bottom of the first page, it said, I can't wait to turn the page, whoever the teacher was. And you mm -hmm. turn the page, and then you, uh, some other stuff you say, it's maybe three pages at a bottom. What an interesting family. And you came home, and I said, because this was school was over. Yeah. We found this in your backpack. And uh, I said, uh, hey, I read your essay about your family. Because, oh, that was the thing you kept procrastinating about. You were supposed to interview your grandparents. You yeah. were supposed to go through albums. And you didn't do any of that. And I kept pushing and pushing it. I literally remember you printing it out. I heard the printer in the morning before school, you were printing it out. The loudest printer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking, ah, you're going to get screwed here and it'll serve you right. There'll be a real parenting moment here, a real lesson, you know? And that's A++. And so I said to you, uh, I read the thing and, uh, and you said, yeah, it was really good. I got a great grade on it. I said, yeah, it's just one thing. I go, what? He says, not our family. You made it all up. He goes, yeah, this is one of the best lines ever. What were they going to do? Check. Yeah. <laughs> but I and at that point, it was the end of seventh grade going into eighth grade. I said, why do we have to go through all this nonsense all year about this? And then you also said something that made a lot of sense. If you're a parent, you should be paying attention to what's going on with your kids more than maybe you, sh you are. And you said, hey, my goal this year was to be more popular. 
That's what I wanted to do. I didn't care about anything else. And I, I said, how did you do on that? He goes, everything was great. I go, we, we done with that now? He goes, yeah. And everything was fine after that. But to me, the one thing kids don't realize is that your parents remember being kids, maybe not everything, but you can say, oh yeah, when I was 12, yeah, it's what I wanted to be too. So it all kind of came together. Yeah. I do remember right outside our garage in the house we still live in. I don't know what, it must've been end of the year, but I remember like, there's a spot where I remember standing where you were yelling at me so much about my lack of, uh, I remember, I remember it exactly the same. And I can't, I cannot walk by that spot without having sort of phantom images. Cause I had this, I developed this technique where when you were screaming at me, I would just focus on a point behind you. (laughs) (laughs) And if I stared at that long enough, you would just disappear. Disappear, And I would think that I was just listening to the radio. But that's exactly the incident I'm just talking about where you said it's exactly where it occurred. I remember it exactly the same way. I don't remember yelling at you that much, but. Well, you wouldn't yell at Josh because I think we all know what would happen. Up the stairs, slam the door, and then we just let him have his. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Difficult. That's not a demand. That's just a, I'm going to divorce myself from this situation. Exactly. Yeah. I do remember there was some, it was like an extracurricular field trip, something that I really wanted to go on. And dad was in the bathroom. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, I'll be out in five minutes. I was like, I, we got to go. And you're like, I'll be out in five minutes. And it, like, it was 10. <laughs> and then we pull into the parking lot, and that bus was gone, and I was so mad. Oh, yeah, and I, I remember that yeah. vividly. But you were clearly in a tight spot. <laughs> 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 I'm sure if you could have gone sooner, you would have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that does. That, that one, I remember, I remember that as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's Priorities. not like you could like, tell your friends what happened. Yeah. Was I remember. In the bathroom. <laughs> you can't. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to think that's the. I'm sure there were times in my life I was more angry, but I can't. I can't think of what those are. But that was certainly the time I remember. I would have guessed was the most frustrating to parent me is those years where I was just. It was only really a year. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. But that Josh was stubborn. That, that you were. He was far more stubborn. Yeah. You were more con- conniving, I suppose. You were just better at playing it off. But mm. he was. He was stubborn. I think easygoing. I'd prefer maybe instead of conniving. <laughs> nah, conniving's the right word here. Yeah. You, were, you, you were. You were. Yeah. You know how to play the game a yeah. little better. But Josh didn't even try. He was stubborn. But uh, the the best examples. You were very young in your bedroom. Your bed came up against a shelf, and uh, it was right at the height of your bed, and you had all these stuffed animals and we used to be concerned that there were too many stuffed animals in the in the bed so i would put them on the shelf when you went to bed and you didn't want anything on that shelf your expression when you were young was always would start when you didn't like something you would say i told you i told you nothing on my shelf nothing on my shelf and so we'd have to take all the animals off of the shelf and meanwhile, I had just redecorated your room, wallpapered it, painted it, mm-hmm. and it, the shelf was painted. And so you go to sleep. We move some of the uh, stuffed animals on the shelf, go back downstairs. And later we hear f- footsteps. I hear the water on. Footsteps coming back. Footsteps going on. Water on. Footsteps coming back. We don't know what's, we listened to this for a while. We go upstairs. You had gone into the bathroom and got cups of water. You were pouring it on the uh, shelf, which had orange paint on it. And you were rubbing it with towels until you had blistered the paint. Mm. And I walked in the room. I said, what are you doing? And you said, I told you nothing on my shelf. I think I was pretty clear. <laughs> it was <laughs> very clear. Not even paint. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, and I, that was a real teachable moment for me because if we hear footsteps in a water faucet, we never give it an hour. <laughs> we, we move pretty quickly <laughs> oh I'm sure it's fine <laughs> uh, we have I believe we have one more question let's give it a listen hi Josh and Seth since it seems like we're all destined to turn into our parents I want to know who's turning out to be more like your mom and who's turning out to be more like your dad thanks love the show I think mom and I have a lot in common, 
and what we love to do. But I think as mannerisms, I find that I am dad way more than I am mom. I think that's true, but I think we both, um, we obviously both have parts of both of them. And Mackenzie will very often say like, oh, you sounded just like your dad when you said that. Yeah. And it's usually when I'm angry. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. weirdly, that's when, it, yeah. yeah. I slip into a Pittsburgh accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but that is, yeah, that's when it most comes out. But it's, you know, I like when you guys are on the show that people can see the the lineage you know, when I read the YouTube comments after you guys do a sketch, for example, they're like, oh my God, well, now you see why Josh and Seth are like that. Like the delivery, there is a Myers family delivery that I think we mm. all have. And, mm-hmm. and I certainly think, you know, to make sure that it's not just when I get angry, but I think the way we the story tell is very much uh, inspired by dad. And then the one time I tried to live like mom and have as many drinks as she did, I was in the ER. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like you try to emulate, you know, actors that you love or comedians that you love and they, they're different and they have different qualities and this might be, you know, more of a Steve Martin take than a Richard Pryor take, but I feel like the same way there's a there's a dad but I, approach I, and a mom approach. I, I, I think Seth hit on it. I think it's telling stories. Yeah. I think for me, this came from growing up here. We were just talking about it today. In high school, there was this, this uh, IKC and, and Center in, in East Liberty, and, and I was saying to you this morning, being on the steps of that place, you know, maybe one night a week or whenever it was, and, and hearing guys tell stories and making one another laugh, and laughter was currency, man. It really was. And where I grew up, was I said, was near Dilworth School. There was lots of kids. We used to hang out in that schoolyard all the time. And we laughed all the time. We, we made fun of one another all the time. We teased one another all the time. One thing that came out of that is you, you had a thick skin or you couldn't survive in that environment. But telling stories to make other people laugh was something that was really part of growing up for me. And we all are storytellers. And, and Hillary's become a good storyteller because she she's absorbed that culture as well. And like uh, with her friends, she tells stories all the time. And when she's telling a story when I'm there, I always think about how much better she could do than she does. But she does a good job. Oh boy. <laughs> she does a good this. job. And, uh, it's not. This is, I, I really wish you could all see her face. <laughs> Because I think in his head, he's like, this is a compliment. (laughs) Her face is not registering. (laughs) No. I will say, when I read books to the kids, uh, Lexi will always say, you read like your mom. Mm. And I Mm. like that. When we talk about stories, you were the the story reader. Yes. Yeah. And I like that I learned that rhythm, especially like reading Roald Dahl books and realizing, oh, these are books I'm reading now. The same books that my mom read me. And, uh, yeah. yeah. There's this one cassette tape that we, on a road trip, the four of us took with our Uncle Kurt. And in that, you read us, I think, Serendipity. And there's something else that you read us. And it's to hear that sort of sing-song voice that went with all your stories. It's, yeah, it's just <laughs> great. I r- certainly read to your children, Seth, but I don't remember reading to you. Do you guys remember that? Or no, was no. I was the reader. Yeah. I think it was her, it was mom for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, she would read us like Roald Dahl, and you'd be like, "Do you want to guys want to hear the new Ludlum?" <laughs> 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 Little Ed McBain before <laughs> Brad. Yeah. Even working in my career, when you were you know doing business development for whatever it was, you you were talking to people. You're always telling them a story. That's what you're really doing. I mean, that that was would be what made me good at what I did is that that I could talk about something and something to do with finance or whatever, but put it in the context of a story. And even my friends from growing up, I'll call somebody, will call me up and say, give me a story. Yeah, that, that, It's all about storytelling. And if we haven't said our dad just retired from a successful career as a con man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of storytelling. A lot of storytelling. I have one last question that was emailed in. Somebody asked this. This feels like we're maybe searching for a compliment. But when was the first time you remember being proud of your son's? Taking a little, maybe edit out yeah, the pause. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> was it was it when they got their own podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that that it's wasn't much. Been. Yeah. Everybody has one of those. No, I think uh, <laughs> good burn, fair burn. I think that uh, this goes way back, <laughs> way back when you were Wilbur. I was Wilbur in Charlotte's Web. In Charlotte's mm-hmm. Web, he was. 
some pig. Thank you. Were you. Some pig. <laughs> and what, how old were you? Kindergarten? I was second grade. Sec- was yeah. it second grade? God, yeah. that's amazing to think that Ash's age, because uh, Ash, who I love so much, would be such a shitty Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I would say I, I can't remember a first uh, first moment or there's been a lot of moments uh, and, yeah. and different things, big things, little things. Uh, yeah. I think that's been a continuing theme. Not I, I couldn't pick out one. No, I can't either. I can't couldn't pick, pick out, out one. one. I will say when we go home, one of the nicest things is the uh, scrapbooks you kept, especially for early career stuff mm-hmm. where literally anything yeah. is, is cut out and put in a scrapbook. And that is a very... Uh, very nice thing. And then you have one for dad that's empty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, there's a picture of him with a bunch of wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That nice uh, wood yeah. picture. Yeah. Back when that was the con. <laughs> <laughs> he was early in the wood game. Yeah, he was a, early yeah. in the wood game. It was, a, it was a picture of me pointing at you two having you cut Some and stack. stack and yeah, wood. cutting and yeah. stacking wood. It was me yeah. managing the process, yeah. Well, this has been very lovely. Thank you for your questions, everybody. Thank you. Thank you to Airbnb for what has already been an incredibly cozy vacation. Like I said, we do this every year. This already feels different and yeah. more special to be in a home. Uh, we're going to finish this up. We're going to move back to our Scrabble game. Oh, and I think it might be gin and tonic time. It for might me. be, yeah. yeah. Um, what well, time is it? Not that it matters. By the way, I think it might be gin and tonic time after you've already had a gin and tonic. It's really funny. (laughs) This also real quick. So I'm having breakfast or coffee with mom and dad at the hotel. They're about to go with you. Yeah. We're having a nice, calm, everything's good, little sit down, little catch up before they leave. They go upstairs to get their bags. You call me, Seth, and you're flustered. You're like, are you with dad? Like his phone is in Queens. We have to catch an airplane. And then I, out of my sort of perfectly calm, everything's going the way it should. Then I got to race upstairs. I knock on the door. I give dad my phone. I'm mad now yeah. because you're mad. And so it's all building up. We get in the elevator with them. We press the button to go to the lobby. The lobby button on the elevator panel falls off and falls on the ground, this little brass circle. I bend down to pick it up. I hit my shoulder on a dispenser for- uh, Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. It makes me so mad, I punch it. It opens up like it was like, oh, do you want to refill the hand sanitizer? Which isn't what I wanted. So I slap it closed. Dad's looking at me with this little smirk and he goes, there you go. (laughs) So I guess to answer an earlier question, we're more like our mom. (laughs) This is a delight. Uh, Thank you to our listeners. Thank you to Airbnb. Thank you to Pittsburgh. Greatest city in America. Let's go Steelers. Let's go Steelers. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Here we go, go. go, Steelers. I got a feeling. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Bye. Who goes to Pittsburgh most every year? Well, it's the Myers family, recounting their memories of times they were here. That's classic Myers family. Hurry and Yerry and Sufi and Posh. They are a core for family. They all love to stay together and have some beautiful Pittsburgh weather. Dad tells stories. Sometimes he says things that he just said. Repeat stories. Hurries, eyeballs, micro ladder head. Check out downtown. Cross the bridge to see the Steelers play. It's nice to get a win, but that wasn't happening. Now Soup and Dad will be crabby all day. The incline is so fine, a sight you should see. So says the Myers family. They were so cozy in their Airbnb. That snuggling Myers family. For many Sammies piled up to the sky To feed the Myers family Family closeness is their mission With this yearly Pittsburgh tradition